Hi there, and welcome to the 54th Octoprint on Air. I'm your host, Gina Heuske, still no B in the middle of that. And yeah, welcome. It's been a while, admittedly. Um, and why that is the case, I'll be going over in a minute. But first of all, the short outline of what we are going to talk about today. Uh, the usual, really, I will tell you what I have been up to, what the next steps will be, then we'll have a quick look at the stats. And since this is no longer a live recording, but rather, uh, or rather a live stream, but rather a, a recording that I do just like, yeah, during the regular workday, we will not have any Q&A here. Q&A stuff will be uh, split out from now on. I explained that on the, uh, uh, on the last one of these. I think, at least. I hope I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, without further ado, what have been up to? Um, so since the last one that I did here, I first of all was at CCC camp. And I mentioned that I was going to do that in the last one in, in Octoprint on Air 53. Um, yeah, I spent a wonderful week there. Wonderful, but also very intense and very sleep depriving. Um, that data, uh, that Datenswerk project that I might have mentioned la the last time was a big hit. And uh, just as a quick reminder, we are talking about something like this. Uh, so a buddy of mine, Ramses and I, uh, we deployed a, a small army of 10 printed garden gnomes that contain sensory data, uh, sensors uh, for uh, recording environmental data, such as temperature, uh, humidity, um, uh, air pressure, uh, volume, um, and also UV sen uh, UV um, load, UV level, UV le UV index. That was the word, right? Uh, UV index, and we deployed them throughout the whole campsite, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, many people uh, talked uh, to us about that stuff, and um, uh, yeah, that is going to be something that we will be doing in the future at future CCC events as well, probably, because the, 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 the feedback was just, was, was just amazingly positive. And, uh, uh, yeah, also, um, uh, also caused some, uh, some, some fun, um, some fun things because yeah, suddenly people started collecting all of them. Like, uh, I found all 10 and then we told them, yeah, well, uh, meet us at this and this bar and we'll uh, give you, give you a drink or something like that. And, uh, so. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I also did um, an Octoprint meetup at, at a camp, a small one with, yeah, I honestly forgot to count the number of people who showed up, but I think it was at least 20 or so. Uh, we had stickers and we had cookies and uh, a lot of lively discussions and it was really nice to meet a lot of you. Uh, so thanks to everyone who made it there. Uh, it is it's always nice to actually be able to meet people who uh, use Octoprint and and talk to them in person and such. And uh, yeah, it was it was really really fun. We also had a lot of fun with a lot of um, a lot of luck with the weather, um, and that certainly um, also paid into it. I had chosen a location to meet where if push came to shove, we would, would have had a roof above our head, but thankfully it was not needed. So that was good. Um, yeah, as usual at events like that, I met a lot of people that I didn't plan on meeting also thanks to the Datenzwerge, but, um, yeah, I also forgot to meet a bunch of people that I did plan on meeting. So if that is you, I'm really awfully sorry. And maybe at the next event, you know how it is. Um, yeah, what else? I got eaten alive by mosquitoes, pretty much, and had to realize that I'm getting too old for tents that I cannot stand in. So that is something that I now rectified and bought myself a bigger tent. Um, and long story short, this 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 event was was something that I really needed, and that was amazing. And it is exceptionally hard to put into words the experience of being at one of these and. Um, the stuff that happened, the stuff that we did, the stuff that that we got to play with. And yeah, it was just great. If you ever have a chance to go at one of these events, I can only recommend it. Yeah. What else did I do? Uh, also, uh, yeah. So right after camp, I worked for two weeks on Octoprint and then I went on my actual vacation. Camp was not a vacation. It was anything but a vacation. It was an amazing event, but it was not a vacation. So I went to my actual vacation. Uh, for two weeks uh, to the southwest of France with some friends 
who happened to have a house there. And uh, yeah, so I swam in the ocean for the first time in my life, which is really nice. Uh, I read a lot. We played a bunch of board games. We went through the whole Dorf Romantic campaign, Dorf Romantic the board game, not Dorf Romantic the video game, uh, over the course of several evenings. And uh, I once more got even uh, I got, got eaten alive by even more mosquitoes. So apparently I taste well. Um, okay. Uh, what else? Um, some health issues, which is also the reason why this one got a bit delayed. Um, I actually intended to push this out earlier than I now am doing, but yeah, um, my body did not play along. <laughs> Let's just put it at that, uh, leave it at that. But still, um, that is all of the meta stuff that happened. Now let's get uh, into the actual Octoprint side of things. So on October 9th, I released 1.93. And the most important bit in there is probably a fix for a security issue that got reported to me in between camp and vacation. So um, the thing, uh, the, the problem, first of all, is that um, a malicious admin or yeah, someone, some malicious person talking to some unsuspecting admin uh, into into doing bad things uh, could uh, configure a G-code script, so settings G-code script um, that would then execute arbitrary Python code. So could be used to yeah open a reverse shell or or yeah or execute whatever um, uh, when the script was run, e.g. when the printer is connected or when print job is paused, resumed. So the G-code scripts uh, uh, are what we are talking about here. Not uploaded G-code files, but only the scripts that you can configure in the settings for which you need admin. Um, so uh, if that issue would have been possible to exploit just by a regular user, I would have pushed out um, a fix sooner. But given that you do already need admin rights to exploit it. It got classified with a medium severity. Uh, there is a, yeah, there is basically like you classify security issues with something like uh, something called CVSS scoring. Um, and uh, that is what I just go through with everything that is reported. And then I make a decision on how fast it needs to be fixed. So that got classified as medium. So I decided, okay, that will have to wait until I'm back from vacation, which was a good idea um, because uh, that allowed me to also put in uh, uh, into the release also a, a workaround for a regression um, with a yeah with an update of a third party dependency. So Pydantic got updated uh, by uh, at the end of September uh, to a new version and that new version, um, the binary packages uploaded for that new version by Pydantic turn out to be broken. So if you try to update Octoprint um, through to, uh, to 192 or just try to reinstall Octoprint or try to install Octoprint for the very first time on an affected platform, in that case, uh, yeah, the Raspberry Pi for one and uh, not not everything. So on my own, on 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 uh, yeah, on an on an uh, i three eighty six machine, apparently it was not broken the package, but on 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 um, on ARM v seven it was a bit of a weird thing, and it kept on getting more weird and weird with with follow up versions. But anyhow, if you try to install Octoprint on one of these um, systems on one of these affected systems, then it uh, would install just fine, but not be possible to run it because of uh, Py uh, yeah, when, when, when the settings management inside Octoprint uh, got initialized and this bug would trigger that was in, in these broken packages. <clears throat> and that would lead to things not no longer working. And that was, of course, a bit of an annoying thing. And simply pinning the affected dependency to a prior version fixed it in the field and that was something that I was also put, uh, able to put into 193 then and that was good. Um, actually, we still have an ongoing problem with some of these uh, Pydantic builds that are still out there. So this is a problem that keeps on giving. Um, but it was also the reason why for a while it was not 
possible to install or run Octo rather run Octoprint under um, the newly released Debian Bookworm because uh, the Python 3.11 on Bookworm on ARM would potentially on on ARM uh, with activated PyWheels would pull in the binary packages from PyWheels, which were also broken, so um, that caused problems as well. And um, I uh, reported this problem, that there is an issue with the PyWheels binaries upstream, both to Pydantic and the PyWheels project. PyWheels has since pulled these packages, so installation of Octoprint, or rather running Octoprint under Bookworm under Raspberry Pi stuff or PyWheels stuff is now possible again. Um, as of uh, Monday, October the 16th. But that is still something that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, depending on how the Pydantic people react, they need to fix some bits in the package build so that these broken packages no longer get uh, uh, accidentally built by automatic package builders like PyWheels. Um, uh, as soon as that is fixed, then I can remove the version pin again and uh, hopefully that problem will be solved. But for now, it's something that I still need to keep an eye on. Yeah, and something else that I was also fixed in 193 was uh, I fixed a regression um, that caused extrude retract uh, the extrude and retract button on the control tab no longer work uh, to to no longer work if you had um, modified the ex the default extrusion length to use there, which was due to uh, a data conversion error basically, and that got uh, fixed by a PR thankfully. And that also made it into 193. So all of that stuff is done and solved if you install 193. So hooray, <laughs> updates. Um, okay, so what else did I do? Um, the new webcam stack that I've been working on for a while now is still not um, made the new default one, is still not considered stable. And the reason for that is that we have a problem with camera streamer um that the testing in the field by many of you revealed that it, yeah it has some some weird stability issues so um if you um if you start the server if you start the camera server so if, if camera st streamer gets started which it automatically gets started on the octopi image with the new stack uh and nothing accesses the camera stream for an hour or something Maybe it's less than an hour. We don't fully know the exact time uh, that we are talking about here. But if you wait an hour, then it seems to trigger pri uh, quiet uh, um, reliably. Um, reliably? That word seems wrong. I hope you know what I meant. Um, um, then the stream will simply no longer work. Like the server will still be running, but... As soon as you try to access it, it locks an error, uh, tries to recover, doesn't successfully recover. You get an internal server, server error when you try to watch the stream. And the problem is that this problem is not self-healing. So um, if the server were just to crash in that case, then it would be automatically be restarted, at least on the Octopi image by the uh, systemd unit file. And things would be fine, but uh, the server just hangs in this broken state and uh, it keeps running. It looks fine. It looks alive. There is no way to detect this being broken, but it is broken. So that is a bit unfortunate. Uh, and this is also currently a blocker. I might be able to work around this by accessing the stream once as part of the startup routine. But frankly, I would prefer if this got solved upstream because it... I mean, working around this problem is not going to solve this problem. This problem should be solved. This is not not how a server package should behave, that it simply stops working if you don't access, access some endpoint within an hour or so. But uh, yeah, so it's reported upstream. Data is available to uh, Ayufan, and I hope he will um, be able to find that or just, yeah, or we, we yeah, ask what... I, so I'm happy to help with in, in whatever way I can. 
uh, if he needs more information and such. But for now, uh, I have provided everything that I have, and hopefully that is going to help in solving that. And uh, once these stability issues are solved, then we can look into making this the primary uh, image. For now, uh, that is actually a blocker for the general rollout of the camera streamer based webcam stack for Octopi because, yeah, I mean, if you just don't access it and then stuff hangs, this is not, this is simply not production ready. Um, okay, something else that I also did was uh, I pushed out yet another new release of the Pi support plugin. Uh, I already mentioned doing one in the last Octoprint on Air. Now I did another one. Uh, because I got asked if it would maybe possible to uh, make it more visible in the reported Octopi version what camera stack is included on the image. Because with now two images being prominently used, and uh, both the one with the old camera stack and the new camera stack, we are seeing some issues uh, in, 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 in first level and, and uh, first level support where people are not able to provide. Uh, to, to tell us which stack they are exactly using when they come to us with webcam problems. And figuring this out then is a bit of a mess so far because you then have to look at the exact build number, check what stack was built in with this build number, and then you know that. So um, what I did now is that the Pi support plugin will check what kind of stack is running, will put this into the system info bundle, bundle prominently, and will also add a little cam po uh, post fix to the reported Octopi version. So uh, if you now install, um, or, or rather if you if you update the Pi support plugin, then you will, on an, on, an, on an Octopi image running the new webcam stack, then you will see that uh, the Octopi version will now be reported as Octopi asterisk, because it's an up-to-date build, then 1.0.0 because this is the base Octopi version and then cam next to it. And after that, the build number is still reported, but um, that way at least it should be possible to easily see with one glance what kind of camera stack you're running. If there is no cam next to it, it's the old one. If there is a cam to it, it's the new one. Um, and yeah, the bundle viewer was also extended to provide that kind of information more visibly. So the camera icon will show up on the on the system info uh, panel if uh, if the system info panel indicates that this is the new camera stack. And that will hopefully solve some of the confusion out there with people not knowing what they actually are running and the people trying to help them not being able to figure that out easily. So that was done as well. Then I also did some more work on the docs migration that is still ongoing. And you might be wondering if uh, I have any news about RPI 5 support for Octopi. Uh, and I sadly have to tell you that I have no news there yet. So the thing is, I actually got a preview unit. I have it right next to me here. Um, you can actually hold it up really quick. Um, but uh, the problem is, this one arrived right in between the camp. Uh, it arrived while I was at camp. Then I first had to uh, get it back from where it was delivered to. Uh, then I had to take care of a security issue, as you might have noticed, and everything else that I had scheduled for in between these two weeks. Then I was on vacation. Then I got sick. Then, uh, yeah, I had to take care of a lot of other stuff. So short story. Um, this hardware release reached me at a time when I really simply had no resources left to test stuff with it. And um, uh, yeah, with the schedule already full to the brim, that is just how it is. So um, uh, no early testing possible this time. And this will have to happen now after the release, I guess. Um, the good news is that thankfully Printed Weasel has volunteered to help here. Um, so once he gets his pie, and that should hopefully happen soon as well, because I uh, worked out some stuff, um, we'll cooperate and see uh, that we can get an image out that uh, works on the Pi 5 and actually has Octoprint and everything on board. Um, in the meantime, I strongly suggest to just stick to the Pi 3 or the Pi 4 or the Zero 2. All of those are perfectly capable of running Octoprint and it really doesn't take, you really don't need the additional power of a Pi 5. Personally, I have to say that just like the Pi 4, 
the Pi 5, for me personally, feels like a complete waste to be running Octoprint on. That thing is way more capable than you need for driving a 3D printer. But yeah, I hope we will still have the option to also get any of the older models or at least the 02 or such uh, in the future and will not yeah, get the 5.5 as the only offering going forward because it's just too much power for, for the use case. Yeah. Okay, so that was everything that was happening the past two months. Um, what are the next steps? So something that is coming up in, in just two weeks time is that I will be traveling to San Francisco from November 5th to uh, um, the 11th. Um, I've been invited to visit the GitHub HQ there uh, to pass participate in both an internal uh, conference for the GitHub stars, which I'm still one of, um, uh, called Nova, which is, I think, the fourth iteration of that event now. And the past three were always a lot of fun. Uh, even though those were only virtual, they were still a lot of fun. And this is the first one that is going to happen hybrid and also uh, so so remote, uh, virtual and on site. And I, uh, I, I uh, thankfully got a chance to do that on site. And I will also be attending GitHub Universe, which is right, yeah, basically after that Nova uh, thing. So that is happening. And uh, I've never been outside of Europe, so uh, this is something that is very exciting and frankly highly anxiety inducing as well. <laughs> but I got my passport, I got all my shots that I need, and uh, I got my Esther, I got everything. So hopefully that will just work out fine. Um, and while my schedule will be quite full, I also hope that I'll be able to squeeze in some sightseeing as well. Um, my big plan actually is, or my big goal rather, after being able to sink my left toe into the Atlantic for the very first time in my life this year in France, I hope to be able to sink the very same toe into the Pacific as well. So wish me luck, this works out, because that would be a really nice, fun thing to cross off the bucket list. I mean, yeah. It admittedly only entered the bucket list after I saw that I might have a chance to pull this off this year. And it is a bit of a random goal in life to be able to sink your toe into two oceans in the same year. But it's something that I hope to do. And even though it is November, as far as I saw the temperatures, usually in San Francisco should not be too bad to prevent me from pushing, uh, pulling off the sock for once and dipping the toe into water. Um, yeah. What else is something that I'm going to do next? So obviously uh, work on 110.0, uh, which uh, has already be going, been going on for a while. Um, but um, yeah, and I recently also added Python 3.12 support and introduced a new versioning tool because our fork of version year that we were using to calculate the version number of Octoprint depending on what branch you are on and um, whether you have a clean checkout or not. So more a development thing really, but that is also what calculates it from the latest tech. Uh, and uh, so our, our fork of version year got a bit long in the tooth and was running into more and more issues on every single Python update. And it turns out that most of the functionality that it offers, we, we didn't even use in Octoprint. Um, so it turned out that, yeah, simply doing a quick rewrite and combining some stuff, some stuff from version year with some stuff from Miniver and some stuff from myself into a single file that now does all of that. Yeah. Took like one day and, uh, is going to save us a lot of time in the future. So this is what I did. Um, but this is something that will certainly need to see some testing during the RC phase as well. If it really support, it really reports everything like it should. But I'm confident that if not, it can be fixed easily. Uh, and then there are still some to do's in the backlog as well that need to be taken care of. Uh, but long story short, I really hope that I'll be able to still push out a new a first RC for 1.10.0. Uh, this year still, because that would be really nice to uh, to see that uh, that journey start, to see the RC phase start. 
Yeah, and now I need to talk about something that is not a very pleasant topic to talk about. Um, because one other thing that needs to be done soon is I need to do something to counteract the steady decrease in income of the past 12 months. So um, the financial crisis that is currently ongoing out there is something that certainly now also affects me. What, what now? So it has affected me. It has affect, been affecting me the past 12 months. Uh, but uh, yeah, things are starting to get really worrying now. Um, so um, expect some more aggressive to calls to action um, to, to donate, to, to give money basically to the project. As much as I hate this, um, because this is something that makes me feel really, 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 really uncomfortable, but um, it just needs to happen because either we turn this trend around or at least stop it from, from, from going down even further. Or at some point that is just going to be it because um, we are coming to a point now where I have not been able to put back any money for my retirement for several months now. And um, that is just not going to work out in the long run. Um, and before many of you now think, ah, oh, that's probably just because uh, no one uses Octoprint anymore because everyone is jumping on, on, on newer stuff. No, um, the thing is my stats show that for all of 2023, we have been even through the, the, the summer hole, basically, we've been at a very, very steady 150K of um, reporting instances, which um, is uh, actually even, yeah, like the, the all time high so far. In I, my, my, uh, my long term numbers, my historic data starts in, in April 2021. Back then we had 114k instances in 2022 that uh, increased to an average of 120k and now we are at 150k. So all in all the user numbers for the last three years, uh, two years, sorry, for the last two years have increased by uh, around 30%. And then when I look at the, at the financial support, uh, at the actual numbers there, for the past two years, I'm looking at the decrease of over 30%. So something is really not adding up here if it looks like that. And um, of course, uh, and of course, prices for everything, like my power consumption here just for, for working. Uh, and even though I have already downgraded to just working from a laptop, um, the hosting of the website, the forms, the tracking server, all of that stuff. Um, various domains, backups, all of that, that just keeps getting more expensive. So my monthly, uh, my monthly costs during that time have also increased and I have not actually looked up the percentage of that, but, um, it's definitely something that I feel. So as you can see, something really needs to change here because this is simply not, not sustainable for the long run. And uh, I'll be working on a number of things in the coming weeks and months to hopefully turn around uh, things before I'm forced to throw in the towel, which uh, if push comes to shove is what I'll do. Like I'm quite confident that I'll be able to find something else to do with my time. But um, you can rest assured that if I'm not able to work on Octoprint full time anymore, that I will no longer work on Octoprint at all because um, I tried that in the past. This project is simply too big to be doing as a pet project on the side. So if it doesn't pay the bills, that's it for me. Uh, as sorry as it makes me to say that. And yeah, so bad news, I know, but still something that needs to be addressed now. And um and and put in the light because now there's still a chance to turn this around and i personally want to turn this around like i've been doing this for 10 years now it is still fun though even though it is also a very very stressful job it is still a fun one um so i would like to see this continue to work but I'm also prepared to take the necessary steps if it doesn't. So, um, yeah, just as a word of warning, you might see more call to action. You might see some stuff built into Octoprint, no ads, I assure you. Um, but just like things that 
tell people, hey, by the way, you can support this because I also got some feedback that people are not aware of that they are able to support this. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking that this might actually be because most people these days probably install Octoprint just by going through the imager and downloading the Octopi image through that and never interacting with the website anymore, which tells them, hey, you can, by the way, support that. And so, so something like this uh, needs to be more made more visible again as well. And yeah, so I'm rambling and rambling and rambling. Uh, anyhow, um, just so you know, this is something that is currently happening. This is something that needs to be addressed. And this is something that I'm also going to focus a lot on, on getting hopefully turned around. Um, uh, and that you also might to see, might, might see the one or other blog post pop up about. Yeah, but with uh, the bad news out of the way, and hopefully my mouse waking up again, um, a, a quick look at the stats as usual. So uh, all of these you can actually now see for yourself. You just go to data.octoprint.org and you also see here that we are looking at 150,661 instances that reported in during the past 30 days. Funnily enough, last week when I was starting to prepare this Octoprint on air, <laughs> that was still at 149,000. So, yeah, well, things are still increasing apparently. Um, and um, 193 just released uh, about two weeks ago, I think, uh, has um, already reached the second place here and will hopefully soon replace 192 as the major version. Um, print duration is going up, as I noticed, actually. So we are slowly getting out of this summer hump, that the summer valley in usage, which, yeah, yeah turns out 3D printing is actually seasonal. Who, who would have guessed? Um, and um, I hope that we will soon see the Python 2 number finally decrease below 5%. Uh, it's really time that those of you running, still running Octoprint on Python 2 update, please. Um, yeah, I think that was about that. So there's not much interesting or, or yeah, interesting of course interesting it's always interesting to see how how the stuff is used but there is nothing new no 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 big new uh, surprises that are recognizable on here but yeah so that was what i wanted to show you here and um yeah that was that Sorry for the slightly sad note. <laughs> this is the last point, really, of uh, of the next step. But uh, I really wanted to address this and um, get this uh, get this out into the open instead of worrying alone. Uh, because, as I said, we now still have a chance to turn this around and make this work uh, out again in the long run. And um, so, yeah rather drag it out into the open and do that instead of uh, trying to work things out in silence. Okay, so with that being said, I hope it was interesting. You got a good uh, look at the things that have been going up in the Octoprint universe, basically, and uh, going on, not going up. Ugh. The grasp of the English language sometimes eludes me. Um, and yeah, as always, stay healthy and happy printing. Bye bye.